Hello, everyone. Welcome to the sixth episode of the Frostwalkers podcast. I think I'm right on that. One of these days, I'm going to forget it. Um, joining us today, we have Shay as Rowan, uh, Livy as Sari, um, Artie as Leona, and Graham reprising his role as Plink, the Kenku Necromancer. Uh, mm-hmm. In the last episode, uh, Sari, Leona, and Rowan, with the help of a Wood Elf Bard named Lena uh, took down the first of the hags who had taken on a dark form using a curse from the Order of the Red Eye. Uh, We ended the session with y'all making it back to town with your victory and running into the tavern, telling tales of your your fight as the people of Timshall rested from a very large bout had with uh, some gnolls, goblins, and other machinations of this hag. Um, with that said, we had a, uh, we'll have a bit of a, some downtime today before we get back into the main adventure, and to start us off, let's just say that it has been a few days, and in these few days, some interesting things have happened. Um, the town has kind of gotten back to its usual humdrum affairs with a lot of the, the illnesses random people were getting starting to deplete. Uh, Caleb is starting to feel a bit back to his usual self due to the fact that the power of the coven itself had been broken. The weather is not endless blizzards anymore. Um, you've had some rain and some sun. It's been nice. Uh, temperatures are probably in the low 50s. Um, spring is coming. Uh, you also have started to get some public works back. Um, things like the mail have been starting to reappear. And there's been a backlog of mail, especially since most of the people who are couriers have been sick and the extreme weather conditions. And with that in mind, I'm going to start us off with some letters you guys have received in this break. And how I'm going to do this is because there are four of you. I have a lovely little D4, and I'm going to roll in order of the chat, and I'm going to see who gets their letter first. I rolled a three. So first up is Plink. So Plink... Uh, tell me a little bit about uh, where you live in the town. Do you have like a home? W- what is Plank's residence like? Uh, I- I'd love to talk, but um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah. Graham, tell me what does Plank's residence look like? <laughs> um, sort of uh, baseline. It's like walking the line of poverty here. Not not because Plank can't like afford to live there or anything, just more of a uh he, not a place he spends a lot of his time, so it's sort of just a smaller hut because he's a smaller bird person. He doesn't have guests over a lot, he doesn't do a lot of stuff, so a smaller house is nice. Okay. Um so I think the scene you have your uh your door knocked on, and I think you would probably go over to like a little bit later and you'd see uh not running but just casually doing their job a uh a half elf woman who has probably painted they probably colored their hair this way a very uh bright blue a very bright blue haired half elf woman who is humming a tune as she drops the mail into these people's uh these people's uh boxes and things of that such is she related uh, to Andre? Because Andre has very bright red hair. <laughs> is there a trend? Is there a trend? Half elves with cool hair? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was just kind of going for like the young, rebellious look. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. uh, Plink, your letter is from a familiar... Uh, hmm. Plink, did anyone else in your uh, little caravan know how to write? Or were you like revolutionizing the system with that? Uh, a couple of uh, people here and there who had to do, like, the uh, trades and everything knew how to write. hmm So I think you got a very small note from one of them. Uh, they're basically telling, or from maybe another group of traveling or Kenku. And, uh, it's actually very, very nice. It's, uh, wishing you well, uh, because it has been two years to the day of your band just, uh, in the words of the letter, disbanding. Their extermination. 
Yes. Yeah. But they're wishing, they're wishing you well, uh, hoping all is well. And they've gifted you a little, uh, just a little feather based brooch. It's like, it's just sort of a pin on thing, but it's very cute. Aww. Oh, you mean like uh, a brooch? A brooch? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Um, it just kind of affirms, like, hope all is well. Uh, please take care. Um, we know you're in a more civilized town and we heard some things going on there. So, uh, just hoping all is well. Please respond if you can. Um, and it is signed a elder Kengu named Skinner. Hmm. Oh, that's a cute name. Mm-hmm. Are all of are all of Plink's band members Kenku? They were. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Uh, I don't want to get too much into Plink's backstory here, but yeah, okay. it's 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 a big oof. But um, <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah, that's a great way to sum it up. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> uh, the only family you've ever known. Was- Slaughtered brutally. Big oof, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> that has the same energy of that's rough, buddy. <laughs> it don't always be that way, but sometimes it do. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say, Plink, uh, you noticed that this letter is dated a few, few days ago, and that's probably because, you know, the entire town was at war. Yeah. Which, uh, because only Leona, Sari, and Rowan went off into the mountains, you stayed behind and helped fight. So give me a little bit on what Plink was doing during that whole situation. The people of Timshaw were up against these gnolls and things of that such. Um, mo- mostly a matter of, uh, I, I mean, there's a lot of gnolls, obviously, because they travel in hordes. So the the only thing a necromancer can really do at that point is make sure that any corpses that fall down on the en- enemy side get back up on your side. So it's... Yeah, I think it helped overwhelm the forces rather quick. Well, just imagine, you're climbing over a mountain of corpses to get up a wall, and some of them start to pull you down. You'd be a little freaked out. You're right. Yeah, uh, just a little bit. Let's see. Is... So, Plank, during downtime, there are a few things you can do, and I will say this for everyone, so in case you have one that, uh, that speaks to you. There's crafting, where you can make some non-magical objects, practicing a profession, recuperation of things like disease and injuries, researching, and training. If any of those speak to you, uh, let me know, and we can run that. Otherwise, uh, we can move on to the next letter. Um... Can I eat? Well, of course you can eat. <laughs> You're having a, like, lifestyle expenses I'm not caring about, so Plink eats normally. Neat. I bet he eats, like, worms and stuff, because he's a little bird. Nah, he just yeah, fucking yeah. loves cheesecake. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> That's adorable. I, I want to believe now that, like, Plink would, like, walk into the tavern and just, like, this is, like, one of the few words from hearing, like, the people at the tavern just saying, like, one cheesecake, you've picked up the word cheesecake. Oh. <laughs> so, just like... Puts a, you, just puts a singular worm on top of the cheesecake. Perfect. <laughs> Aw. <Darn> it. <laughs> he carries them in a little baggie. Just a little baggie fa- worm. <laughs> fancy cheesecake now. Now it's classy. It's kiss. <laughs> Everyone in the, in the tavern's just like, ew. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's, that's Plank's moment. Um, I'm gonna roll again. Look, uh, Leona, this be you. As a... Uh, hmm? Yeah, so, uh, it's been a few days. What has Leona done, generally, post this, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty big fight? Um, well, she was largely unscathed and unaffected, so she's, like, back to 100% normal. That weirdo, That's like, true. hanging from the rafters, doing crunches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just training. And <laughs> Do, doing CrossFit. Yeah, it was that bro at the gym. <laughs> you and Zagreus have, like, a fucking training program going on. <laughs> oh, I love that. The you guys are just, like, competition constantly. Oh, yeah, you guys are just, like, sharing, like, notes to each other, just, like... Okay, today I did like this many of this, this many of that. Beat that sucker. 
think there's uh, probably a, like a dart throwing competition that's always going on at the tavern. That oh, every yeah, time we, someone shows up, it's just like high score, high score. My name is now carved into the wall. Beat that jerk face. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, Leona, since you hang out, would you say you hang out with Zagreus a bit? Probably a little bit. All right. Um, I think you have this conversation then. He uh, is in the tavern one of these days, and as he's throwing darts with you, he just kind of goes to you and goes, hey, Leona, I, I want to talk to you about something. I, uh, I have a choice to make, and I, I really... It's a hard one. And I want a second opinion, because I think I'm going to do something, and it might sound stupid, but I, I need you to hear me out. Always go chocolate, never vanilla. You should know this. <laughs> uh, um, he just goes, uh, of course, chocolate is always the best comfort food, duh. Uh, but, <clears throat> though this is a little different. Uh, you remember Sylvester and Nath, right? Our uh, guests, if you will? Uh, tall, quiet one, small one, 80% gob, right? That, that'd be them, yeah. Yeah, uh, vaguely. Yeah, so Nath and I, quiet one, have been talking, I know, bizarre for Nath. Uh, and realizing more of these towns just need to know what's going on. And since Duskvale and Hargrave are ways away, I didn't want them to make it back alone. I'm thinking of just kind of chaperoning them back home, alerting their towns to what happened, and Eventually making my way back. But I don't know how to break that to Caleb. So, oh, let me get this straight. Captain of the guard, just up and leave? You're just going? Well, I haven't taken a vacation since I started, Leona. This would be, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years of vacation hours that I'm putting in for one maybe weekend or month. Weekend a month depends on traveling time. Aren't there two hags left? Did we did we just forget about them? Are are they gone? Is that that? No, it, they're they're still. That's why it's a hard call for me. But it's I would send someone else to do it, but I just and you just see them like kind of struggling to get something out, and you can tell there's more to this than business. I'll put it that way. <laughs> She's like ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, ulterior motives then. Well, She's like giving him the look. Like, you yeah. know the look. It's that yeah. look. Mm-hmm. He, just, <laughs> it, he just goes like, I'll say this to you because you are my, one of my closest confidants and I would call you a very dear friend. Uh, I have a ladron saved my life like three times in the brawl and I have never seen someone so elegant with a blade, and just holy shit, Leona, I am so gay for that man. Uh, uh, buddy, I can feel your thirst from here. Oh. <laughs> he's, just like, he's just like, oh god, I just realized like half of what I said comes off as innuendo, doesn't it? Fuck. <laughs> oh, oh, like all of it. <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, you know, Leona, Leona. We're, we're just watching, we're, just watching Nath work that blade, work that sword. <laughs> He's just like Leona. We're brawlers. You know, you know when someone can fucking kill a knoll in one hit. That's like that's some cool stuff. Slightly offended. That's kind of my thing too. It is, but Leona, you, you know, there's a there's a veneer of thirst. I, I mm, won't judge you too harshly. It's just like, okay, look. If you can help me convince Calum that this is a pragmatic course of action and not at all biased, <laughs> I will owe you one. I just <laughs> lie, lie to right to his face. I, mm. do, I don't want to lie to him, and I do think he'd understand. I just don't. Do you know how embarrassing that would be? Hey, your hey, your Majesty. This guy that I want to hit on is having to go home, and I'm trying to think maybe I can escort him and, like, I don't know, hold his hand or something. Do you realize how fucking embarrassing that is? It's adorable. Oh, do it. Isn't it? Pretty- He's like, <laughs> we don't 17? have such a bad influence. 
<laughs> you know, honesty is the best policy. And she's just like, hit on him. Just do it. Just come on. Coward, go for it. <laughs> but lie to the prince. I'm going to roll for something really quick. Nothing prevalent to you, Leona. He manages to land a dart like right in the center and just goes, ah, I guess you're right. Uh, if I lie to Calum about the reason I'm doing this, he's eventually going to find out and that I'm a liar. But if I tell him the real reason, I think he'll understand. I mean, he's done stupid shit for Shira in the past, so I think we'd be even. <laughs> cool. Things that boy's done. Yeah, I, I don't think he can judge. No, no, he can't. Did you well, see Sudo's day? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> if just if goes, I get I your mean, paycheck, I'll do your job for you. Doesn't look, doesn't look very hard. Sorry, buddy. Oh no, it's it's been quiet. I mean, this hag business is shitty as it's been for fuck all everyone else. Oh, it's been great for me. I just do you know how long it's been since I've gotten to use my sword for something other than like ceremonial reasons? You know how long it's been? The last thing I fought was a crash was a crash test dummy. It was it was embarrassing because it managed to land a hit. <laughs> oh, I could tell. You're you're pretty rusty. Oh, yeah. Nathan had to save my life because I'm pretty right. I'm thinking, if I go out there and, like, go on a real adventure for once, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be at my prime when I come back, and I can help you guys win this fight a lot easier, and we'll have a lot of the other towns. It's just a good decision, I think. Everybody, follow your heart or your pants or whatever. <laughs> just... I don't think we need that much help. We are pretty good, but no. That's also part of it. You guys have been, I don't know what fucking luck or will of the gods shit managed to get you, Rowan, Sari, and whoever else together for that night council thing, but you've been doing work. I gotta, gotta hand that to you. Uh, Typ uh. Typically, your work with Shira usually resolves to dealing with drunk people and the occasional uh, how shall we say, interesting, Aetheril. Yeah, but that's fun in its own right. Yeah, hey, Leona, I just fucking poured my heart out, including the thirst, like, 20 minutes ago. I think, I think, I think I feel you. It's fine. It's like, passive on the cheek, and it's just, buddy, just, just go, just do it. All right, yeah. he just throws another dart, let me see how that one does. Yeah, he misses. He misses that one, but it's because he's thinking about other things. He's just like, yeah, I guess you're oh, right. You got your mind on a fine thing. Oh, I see. Try to try to stay a little focused. Just, he's like, just I, I mean, he just goes, I mean, there's little, there's little reason to hit real good than to impress another person. Who's good. Unless you're trying to impress him. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. He just sort of walks off like, I think this tavern, the dart room, probably is like in the basement. So like he's walking up some stairs. He goes, "Hey, Leona, thanks. I I needed that. Gotcha." And Aww. he walks up the stairs, mm -hmm. and sure enough, that uh, all too familiar blue-haired half elf just sort of makes a beeline down the stairs and just goes, uh, "Are you Leona?" Ask was asking. Uh, <clears throat> my name. Is <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for the jacks, little buddy. You. Uh, my name is Nephis. Uh, it's super nice to meet you. I'm the new male woman. Uh, the the old male person has been kind of under the weather lately. Not from the curse, but just you know, I, I'm interim. But I'm, I'm doing my best. She uh she hands you a note and just goes, uh, "This is for you." Uh. I don't, I don't know what it's about. I don't read mail. That's a very big uh, constraint. But judging by the uh, sequence on the letter itself and the very nice calligraphy, I would guess it's from your boss. And she darts off again. Did it come in an envelope or are you just handing me a... No, it's in an envelope, but the envelope is like... Imagine like a very fancy purple envelope with like glitter on it <laughs> and like a very like stylized seal. Just mumbling to herself, so like, boss, my arse, I'm gonna just, ugh, and then opens it. 
it, sure enough, it's from Shira, uh, and it reads something to the effect of, hey, Leona, um, been a while, been a hot minute. Uh, things have been going good for me. I totally get uh, the whole saving, saving, the, saving the town thing. Total, totally on board for that. I live in this town, so I'm very pro-saving it. Um, however, as you know, I typically hang out in the old town ruins, and uh, thanks to those fucking mean lock, that is a not good time for me. They burrowed right under my... Fu- and I just imagine this is in all caps. They burrowed right under my fucking house, Leona. <laughs> Do you know what it's like to live underneath psionic bugs? It is worse than death, Leona. It is worse than death. <laughs> And she just goes, so, I'm in a bit It's of like a- having cockroaches, but a million times worse. Because then at night, you hear them, like, whispering about the damned souls or whatever. It's, it's just, it's shit. It's giving me some good ideas for some pretty, uh, pretty good beats. Uh, uh, but otherwise, it's just a net negative for, for Shira. I, uh... As she's reading this, she is rolling her eyes so hard. She's like, <laughs> fucking princess. Oh, <laughs> She's just like, so, here's the deal. I, I, this is a yes or no question, and I am fully aware that this is a massive breach of a lot of things. However, could I crash at your place for a few weeks? And, like, I just imagine all of this has been written very big and boisterously, but that sentence alone is just in really tiny font, like, as if she was sheepish about saying it herself. <laughs> This is like asking someone out via text. Like this was it's it's, it's real sad, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oof. Oh. Wait. Do, do I write back? And she's just sitting there thinking like is is she listening? What? I don't have a pen. I don't Shit. Think, uh I I think it's just whenever you can respond to her. And you do notice this is a few days old, but that's probably because of the blizzard. Mhm. Although I bet they have like pens and paper at this tavern, probably. Like, like you could nap- write it. Maybe you could write it on like a napkin or. or that would be great. A receipt. <laughs> the crumbled like a beer stained napkin that she finds. <laughs> it's got someone just... else's phone number on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it scratches it out. Leona Weirdo just gives gave this to me. Leona just gives no shits. <laughs> so she... what would you say? What do you say to Shira? So, did she say she wanted to live with me? Yes, her home is currently under meat lock uh, infestation. Oh, or I feel like leona has been there for a while, but she lives very cheaply and probably lives like above the tavern in one of those rooms that most humans would not want. <laughs> but she's, yeah, she'd be like, yeah, if if you can stand the bad music and constant stream of weirdos. You're welcome to the second uh, hammock. All right, I think you uh, write that out, uh, put it in, and um, you're just probably drop it off somewhere. And on your way home, or on your way upstairs, I guess. <laughs> um, you see. Do you like hammocks? Do you like drunken brawls? <laughs> I got you. <laughs> where the, where the entertainment never ends. <laughs> never, uh, even when you're trying to sleep, it's grand. Yeah. He's just like, you thought bug whispers were bad? Wait until you hear drunk songs. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you'd send that along. And with that, I'm going to move into Sorry. Sorry. Uh, what is your... You've kind of described your house a little bit, right? When you wake up at first light, kind of, kind of humble abode, very monkish. Yeah. She doesn't have a lot okay. of stuff. All right. I'm going to say sorry. Your scene happens at first light. You, uh, you wake up, and you have this moment of just pure just enjoyment. You are happy. You took a very good sleep. Like You got a solid 10 minutes of actual sleep, which for you is an achievement, because you are convinced that you can sleep like gnomes, and you've never once thought to trance like an elf. Yeah, because why, why would I? I mean... Gnome sleep. <laughs> I don't know. Why so like, I, trance? I think I think what's happened in the past though is you're like 
I can't sleep. What do I do? <gasps> I'll meditate. And in meditation, you accidentally slip into your trance and you're just like, that was really zen for meditation. <laughs> uh, so we've woken up for one of your uh, zenful meditations. <laughs> when, uh, Rowan can a, help her out with that in the future. <laughs> if she needs help with, uh, with meditation and zen and shit. <laughs> you've knocked on the door. Uh, you've heard a knock on the door. You open it up and it is blue half elf woman again. And she's just like, hey, uh, is, this, is this the home of a sorry? Yeah. Oh, I, I have a letter for you. Oh. Uh, is it A or Z? It's male. L? It's male, sorry. It, it's male. That's not a letter in the alphabet. So she just hands you, she hands you the envelope and it's just like, just... You know how to you know how to open a letter, right? Oh, you mean an envelope? Why didn't you just say you had an envelope? She's just like, yes, an envelope. Now I best be going. Uh, bye. Closes the door. And, well, uh, bye. I guess. Sorry. I who that uh, was. Are you gonna open your letter? Yeah, she opens it. I guess. Okay. Uh, sorry, you haven't. Gotten a lot of mail since you moved into Timshul. <clears throat> you, you kind of didn't end on the best terms with your gnome family, and uh, in the interim, uh, in the interim, you didn't really meet that many people who would send you mail. So mail is sort of a strange thing for Sari. Uh, but judging by the very, it's a very regal font. It's very well written, um, though it's rather blunt and brief. Uh, Fancy. It says, "Sorry, I received word about Timshul." And it sounds like it may get worse. Let me know if you need my help, and I will be there soon, or I can send someone if you need aid sooner. Lots of love, Abix. Aww, Tifa. Uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, what's, can you give me a little bit about that history you got there with Abix? Um, well, kind of the, Abix kind of trained Sorry. Like, mm -hmm. Abix visited the Gnome Monastery while... Abex was on her own mission sort of thing. Uh, they just kind of hit it off and started working with each other because, you know, Sari's way too tall to be fair to fight with the other gnomes in training. So, Abex is more her speed. Mm -hmm. So they kind of trained and Abex kind of took her on under her wing and was like a mom friend. And then, you know, of course, Abex got married had a kid, continue training while pregnant and holding baby, which she's <laughs> dangerous, but sorry, didn't question it. And uh, what of Abix's methods has sorry picked up? Like, what kind of teaching did Abix give you in, in brief? She taught sorry how to act more stupid in a fight so that you throws your enemies off guard. Hmm. So, like, glitter throwing and yes. cartwheeling. <laughs> Let it join Stupid. It all makes sense now. I think, uh, I think um, the important thing to note about Abix is they are a drunken master uh, monk, if I'm correct. So, sorry, I think some of this must have come from the fact you don't exactly know what drunk people are like. <laughs> no. Yeah, like, sorry's vision of drunk is cartwheels and and glitter. <laughs> Sorry's vision of drunk is cartwheels, glitter, and mm, snowballs. And <laughs> snowballs, amazing. Um, so yeah, uh, Abix has sent you this letter, basically offering aid. Of course, it's also dated a few days, so you may kind of wonder, like, has the recent downtime Tim has been in? If that sort of swayed Abix a different way, what kind of what kind of message would you send back? Uh, to this person asking if you need a hand. I think sorry because knowing sorry, she's like very prepared to receive a lot of mail. She's got like a fancy letter tray and these pretty stationery, even though she gets no mail at all. Oh, for the show of it, kind of, and for whenever she receives a letter. <laughs> I just imagine sorry doing the blues because we just got a letter. <laughs> She did that and hummed it subconsciously. 
as cheap. Not knowing what it was, yeah. Is Blue's Clues now canon? No, it's just a song Sorry thinks she made up. <laughs> I just got a letter. I wonder where it's from. Oh. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, anything you want to write back to Abex? And I will make a note of this. Um, Sorry basically would write back, Hi, I'm doing great. I got, I punched really good. Uh, I got hit also. Is it okay for me to bleed a lot? <laughs> Random question. <laughs> Thought I'd ask you, you're smart. <laughs> oh, no. I think we're doing good. Uh, feel free to visit if you want to punch stuff. Love, sorry. <laughs> I actually face palmed. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, do I follow Lance's rule of inspiration for facepalm? <laughs> I don't know. P.S. I love you. Oh, That's sweet. Aww. Um, yeah, so that's your letter to Abix. Um, is there anywhere sorry would hang out when there's nothing to do, or would she just kind of hang at the house? She kind of would hang at the house, or you know, cartwheel through the streets looking for something to do. Alrighty. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to hop over to Rowan. Um, Rowan, what is your typical downtime like? Uh, <laughs> I think I described Rowan's house being kind of like the, the fantasy equivalent of like a one-person apartment. <laughs> yes. And uh, she just has lots of, lots of pets and plants and things. So I think she she does some like gardening, and um, takes care of pets. Uh, I think Co- Coco is there. Coco is probably like larger than she is now. And Coco, I'd say, is at probably full guard drake size at this point. For okay, is guard drakes are really big, aren't they? They're about the size of mastiffs, I would think. Oh, okay. So it's just like a really big dog. Yeah. I thought they were larger than that. Okay, anyways. No. Uh, I'm sure that Coco has chewed up a lot of her furniture. <laughs> has Rowan um, been doing some furniture shopping? Yeah. <laughs> That's part of what she's been doing in time is, is buying new furniture. Um, but yeah, I think just kind of like chilling out, gardening, taking care of her pets. Um... I also think she's been doing some thinking since the last battle. What about? Um, just kind of some, like, introspection. She... She was a pacifist, like, a couple of weeks ago, and now she's killed somebody. And that kind of leaves an imprint on you. Huh. Has she tried to talk to anyone about it? <clears throat> Um, I think she's mostly just kept to herself because she she sees how relieved everybody is, you know? She sees how happy everybody is, and I don't think she wants to, like, you know, like, bring anybody down. Oh, all right, well, it's probably in the middle of one of the things of you just kind of being to yourself um, when you're, uh, your local male girl shows up. Uh, she, this time, probably doesn't even... She's tried knocking and making small talk, but you've been probably skirting it a few times. So I think this time she just sort of slides it under the door and is on her way. Mm. Um, as Nephis kind of takes off, you uh, see that the letter is in a pretty familiar handwriting and has the a very happy little... like art of some some trees uh it is from your family oh is it yeah. from my whole family or like somebody specific i don't think you can make that out from the envelope okay so i'll, I'll open it up all right it says uh rowan um it's been a while since you left uh i'm not I was a little upset at first, I'm not going to lie. You've always been around. 
Uh, but after everything that happened, I can't blame you. I, uh, I gave it a lot of thought myself, and I'm never going to be a druid like, like our parents. I'm, it's just not what I'm called to do. I, I can stare at a tree until the cows come home, Rowan, but I just am not inspired. Uh, but a few weeks ago, this, this group called the Traveling Treasures came through town, and uh, Rowan, I've never heard such beautiful music. I was inspired more than anything else in the world. I realized I want that, that happiness of making people smile from listening to something I've created. It, it, it's beautiful. More beautiful than all the trees in the world to me. And I know that's pretty crazy from this family, but it's how I feel. I'm learning how to play an instrument. I've settled on sitar. And they made an offer to Rowan, and I couldn't refuse. I, I get to travel with them. I get to see places and do things and make music and make other people happy and maybe one day inspire someone else. I just wanted to let you know why you may not see me if you, if you head back home anytime soon. I'll keep in touch. Us, uh, us outcasts gotta stick together. Love you lots. And it's from your oldest brother. Oh, um, I think that Rowan has been kind of not not necessarily down, but just kind of thinking about a lot lately. And I think reading this letter actually makes her really happy. I think that she has known this about her brother for a while that he found this passion and i think she's really happy that he's pursuing it so i think that that's what she would she would do i think she would very kind of like i don't know if like excitedly but just kind of very happily write a letter back that says something to the extent of like i always knew that about you and i'm really glad that you've decided to pursue your passion it was definitely difficult for me to break off from the family, but sometimes you just have to pursue your own path. You may end up doing things that you don't expect, but it's all about the journey. I hope that you achieve everything you want. Uh, and then she just signs it, love Rowan, and, um, probably also draws some, like, nice little pictures and stuff, you know, maybe a little drawing of, like, a, a sitar or something. Oh. Yeah. Rowan's, Rowan's relationship with her brother is, is pretty nice. I need to come up with a name for him. <laughs> all right, so, uh, you guys have all sent out your return letters, um... And it's been a few days when one final missive comes to each of your doors, including you, Plain. It's from the prince. And it basically is an invitation to the castle for his birthday party. Because in his own words, you're, you've all become some of my greatest friends in such a short amount of time. I've never really trusted people this much before. It, I want you to be here. If you can't, I totally understand. You all have lives, but I'd, I'd love the company. No combat, no lies, no anything, just us. And he leaves a time and date. What do you do? Sorry, Sorry's heading to that party. She'd be, Sorry's a strange person, so she'd like get a tent and pitch it outside like you're waiting for a concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Leona. How's what was your response? And uh, are you bringing Shira? How many days after the first letter was this? Maybe a week. So yeah, Shira so- has probably moved in. She reads the letter and when it says no combat, she just sort of sighs heavily. But she's <laughs> just been living with a snooty like 
very like, oh my God, how could it be this loud? How do you live like this? Look at this garbage. Oh my God. For a week <laughs> and just like anything, anything to get out of this. Sure. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> and Are just you like, bringing Shira or is she fucking the stabber? Oh, she's bringing her, but she's like not telling her where they're going. She's just dragging her. She's like, oh, I'm gonna save her. I just imagine this whole this whole time is just like Leona. I swear to God, <laughs> I swear to all the gods, if you keep this shit up, doing an um, impromptu performance. You've been living with me. This is this is how you're gonna say thank you. That isn't you know trying to clean up everything in the goddamn house. And by house, I mean tiny, <laughs> tiny room. It was just like, it's so filthy. It's just, I have a system. <laughs> it was just like, it's a bar. It's not even my place. I have no choice in this matter. But now she's enjoying watching Shira squirm a tiny bit. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. Great. Just, just okay. purposely leaves, leaves stuff out. Like, just purposely doesn't throw away her, her like dirty plates and things. Oh, no, no. She, she just goes in and moves all of Shira's stuff like one inch to the left. <laughs> ever she leaves amazing all right um so that's leona and shira rowan uh and plank what are your uh verdicts on the party how do you mean are you coming are you rsvping basically are you going to this castle party for Caleb's birthday why not all right and rowan um yeah i think rowan's kind of been like in her in her house for a while so i think she she thinks it would be nice to get out i think she also feels like she kind of owes caleb a little bit you know and he's 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 been not feeling well she thinks it's only it's only nice it to come. A party until caleb busts out the ice cream <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh when you guys make it into the castle it is decorated almost cornily it like in a very corny way there's blue streamers there's it's very it's paper stream it, it looks like a kid's birthday party but Aww. uh just a little bit more regal there's Please punch so by the door fucking happy with this <laughs> there's punch by the door there's some cookies uh of course there's an ice cream bar um and you see uh an alien at the door and he just goes all right great uh come on in find a place to hide <laughs> Why? Every, it's a surprise party. Oh, this is so cute. And uh, you see, the enemy? no, it's for Calum. We're surprising Calum. Okay, Events, cool. In the room, you see some familiar faces. There's Sylvester, uh, currently hiding in, on behind one of the pillars of, that is holding up the, the I mean, one of the legs that's holding up the table for the ice cream bar. Nath has a. Uh, currently reverted back to their fall form. And they're uh, pretty tall and pretty lanky, so they're able to hide pretty well. Uh, Lena is still there. Uh, she's performing a little loot music, but then upon realizing that the hide time, she, uh, she, makes, it, she makes a dash. And uh, you just hear a voice go, Hello, I'm invisible, but I kept the hat for the occasion. Yay! Uh... It's all your friend, and Andre's there too. Um, a very drunken uh, Talia is somewhere in the residence, uh, already already too hammered to to think congruently. Um, it's it, it's a nice little conglomeration of peeps. Uh, Zagreus is there, of course. Uh, Zagreus looks a little concerned, and when he sees Leona, he kind of breathes a sigh of relief, like my backup is here. Because I think he's been waiting for today to, to spill the news. Um, mm -hmm. So this is the only role I'm going to have you make it for tonight. Everyone make me a stealth check to see how well you hide for this surprise party. Oh, goody. I just got a nat 20. <laughs> Leona, you hide like a motherfucker. You're I'm great. on the ceiling. I um, actually... I yes, actually... Yes, Two nat 20s. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Plank, you've like... Even though you can't really fly as a Kenku, your wings help you flap, so you're just in the rafters and no one can see you. <laughs> I, I swear to God I'm telling the truth, I also got a nat 20. Oh my god! What Rowan, you are, you are curled up a little bit. Sorry, what about you? If you um, get a nat 20 also, I'm going to scream. 
No, I I got a four plus four. Oh, no, no. Just too so excited here's... to be there. Did you bring the tent in with you? And you're hiding Our in the tent? in the middle of the room and, and covers her face because if he oh. can't see her, she can't see him. I I have I mean, a thing. I mean the opposite I, of that. Sorry. I have a thing. I rolled for Shira. I rolled a natural one. Oh <laughs> my god. No. Oh so, no. What here's Sorry, the scene. Hides. Sorry, hides behind Kalem. Shira. <laughs> here's the scene. Caleb walks in. Uh lights are all off. He turns on the light, and Shira fucking blasts a power cord in his face. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just. That's another natural. Caleb just fucking <laughs> what? hit the he deck. Passes, he fucking passes right out. <laughs> oh no, Caleb! Oh no, we can't. He's dead. <laughs> like oh from the God. rafters. Like from the rafters, you just hear "Happy Birthday" as he's <laughs> falling. <laughs> oh, I, no. I rolled that nat twenty for nothing. Rowan this just rushed. Just rushes to Caitlin's side. <laughs> I think you just hear Nace just go, that sounds, this, this tracks, this tracks. I've known him for like, oh, and this tracks. <laughs> um, <laughs> Andre's just face palming in the corner and Talia just, the drunken Talia just screams out. Uh, what'd she say? Oh, I know. She just picks up her drinks, just like, I'll drink to that, and then slams it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been 10 minutes. Caleb finally comes to all of you just surrounding him. And I think some people fanning him and Shira's just like, what? This wasn't my, this wasn't my performance at the castle. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you guys had set up the whole like shebang. This wasn't the lighting I had expected, but that's what I thought. What, what am I doing here? If this isn't my performance. <laughs> you know, Caleb is just like, happy birthday. I brought you this disaster human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Plink is just still hanging because it took a miracle to get him up there. It's gonna take a goddamn miracle to get him down. <laughs> that oh no! Miracle, thy name is Lothor. This wraith just sort of grabs you and puts you on the floor and just Lothor sort of gives you the wheel. I jump off the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I flat, I flat my arms to quote really fucking hard to see if I can fly down. <laughs> just roll a net. Just roll a d twenty. Uh, do I add anything to it? Uh, dex, dex makes sense. Maybe acrobatics. Sixteen. And if you we're if we're doing able... acrobatics, it's eighteen. Okay, with that eighteen, you're somehow able to descend like. Almost like you're falling with style. You're falling with style. And that style also equates to not breaking your bones. Am so I aiming falling. for the truck? <laughs> <laughs> um, Caleb just looks around and is just like, wait, so this, this is a surprise party and not give Caleb a heart attack day? Is there a holiday for that? Uh, you just, just kind of do it every day. Accidentally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it just goes the other 364. <laughs> um, what about Christmas? Oh, we've had we've had Christmas. We've had Christmas. Yeah, but does that give Caleb a ha heart attack day too? And Elliot just goes, have you ever heard of a shambling mound? A what? It's a giant it's a flat move. monster. Oh no. Wait, so out of character, if there's Christmas, that means Christ has existed. It's, probably, it's a different it's, Christ. It's an elder no, named Christ who just showed up one day and danced and everyone liked him. Named Christ, everyone no, it's, liked him. it's... It's Winter the, Solstice. It's, yeah, it's Winter Solstice. Yeah. But, uh, anyway. Uh, Caleb is very maybe happy. They, yeah. Hmm? Maybe there was a gnome Christmas. Gnome there Christmas, gnome, yeah. Gnome Jesus. His, no, his name. His name was. Uh, his name was Mary, and his last name was Christmas. And they liked him so much, they gave him a holiday. <laughs> yes. Uh, but anyway, um, there was a. So yeah, you guys have this really nice moment at the party after Caleb comes to. Uh, you're all <laughs> hanging out. Is there anyone like? Is there anything you guys want to say with now that the group's together? Uh, I'm gonna kind of go silent for a little bit. So if you guys have any little little scenes you want to act out for a couple minutes. I'm down with that. I think 
even though Caleb seems like he's he's a little bit better now, I think Rowan is still just like fanning him <laughs> and like by him just like, do you need me to get you like some water, some bread? You just, you just see him walking up to the bar and just like grabbing the scooper and just like four scoops of mint chocolate chip ice cream later. He's just like, I'm good. <laughs> okay. I Thank mean, you if you can, if you if you can eat, you're probably fine. Oh, I just realized I'm not doing Rowan's voice. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, no, she's sorry. Yay! <laughs> I like it. She continues. Um. So, is there anything you guys want to do at this party? Anyone you want to talk to? We have the whole gang here. Blink so. is gonna splash around in the punch bowl like he's a bird. <laughs> <laughs> like he's a bird. <laughs> oh man, I wanted to drink that. And Elian just brings out another one, like in the other corner of the room, is just like, don't let him get to it. <laughs> Rose is standing guard over there. <laughs> She's just glaring. <laughs> uh, there was a. What was it? Oh, there was a. Oh, yeah, fucking Rose is there too. Um, so, yeah, anything you guys want to talk about? Shira is probably performing just out of. Just out of like, well, if this isn't my fucking Teth Hallis performance, it might as well be anyway. <laughs> when she starts, you just hear Lena go, <gasps> and then she starts playing too, and it just turns into a battle of the bards for a few minutes, just in one corner. <laughs> and everyone else kind of walked away. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds awesome, though. It, it probably doesn't, actually, because you have guitarist with like emo metal Shira, and you have classical loop. Uh, oh, uh, Lena, just going back to back. It's probably real weird. I mean, that could be a, a cool combo, to be honest. Like, kind of. Yeah. You want me to roll for it? Yeah, like classical, yeah. like yeah, kind of cool, like classical goth rock. That sounds pretty awesome, actually. All right, let me roll percentage. It's eighty-two. Yeah, it's actually My cool. Bad. It's like orchestral goth rock music. That sounds awesome. You ever heard the Trans Siberian Orchestra's version of the Carol of the Bells? It's fucking that. Cool. Nice. Uh, anyway, um, anyone got anything before I kind of take us into our last scene, really? Uh, can I do one thing? Please. As a uh, present for uh, Calum, uh-huh. uh, Plink is going to gift him his first inkwell that he used when he started to learn how to write. Oh my god! <laughs> Calum would take a look at this. And I think Plink has probably written out a little explanation, like in like a little parchment he's wrapped around it. Maybe it helped me to make very good. Oh, <laughs> Caleb was just like Plink. I I couldn't. Plink wants a hug. He puts down the thing and definitely bird friend to hug. He's just like Plink. You are welcome to use it anytime. Just come on over and I'll help you. If you want to learn more spells, I can help you too. I, uh, I'm always free. Yeah. Oh. That's so cute. That's so cute. So Is- cute. Uh, Leona, you have a moment after Shira has done her thing. Zagreus is kind of inching over to you and goes, Hey, Leona, uh, wish me luck. <clears throat> and he's, uh, standing by Nath, and he, he kind of, like, gives Nath a very reassuring as he walks over to Caleb, and says, like, Caleb, can I borrow you for a moment? And he's like, oh, of course, buddy, anything. The two walk into the corner of the room, and uh, Nath is just with, they're standing awkwardly with you, Leona and Shira, and it's just, so! <laughs> yeah, looks, just like, it just looks <laughs> Nath up and down, and it's just like, so. <laughs> it's just staring at him like completely calculating and evaluating him with no shame <laughs> Nath is a little concerned but eventually he's just like I uh I really appreciate what Zagreus is doing um he's a, he's a good friend and uh I, I'm very thankful to have met him I lost a lot of friends but I've made a lot of new ones and in a very weird way, I found a family again, and I couldn't have done that if you hadn't come in and, you know, helped us kill those mean luck. I am forever in your debt. Say the word, and I'll be here. 
grins and I'm just like, I'll keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> by by the way, uh, you're you're pretty handy with a with a blade. I'd like to believe so. Yes. Well, our uh, mutual friend, hey, he's mm-hmm. a, a little little rusty. If uh, yeah, some free time to uh, give him some pointers. He I'm thinks sure. about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think Nath has this look of like, hmm, hmm. He just kind of smiles and just goes, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. And he sort of adjusts his glasses a bit. And uh, you see Caleb and Zagreus talking, and there's like a pause in their conversation. And then the two of them start laughing and give each other a hug. And uh, Caleb, Caleb just uh, looks over to him and is just like, You go, buddy. <laughs> and uh, Zagreus smiles and just says, uh, You know, I wouldn't have been captain of the guard this long if there wasn't a prince worth protecting and uh he walks over to you leona and just goes like thank you i caleb was as understanding as i knew he'd be i just needed someone to to remind me of that that's what i fucking told you and you owe me 10 gold he just his happy like beaming face just goes to like and, like, you just see him reach into his back pocket. There's a little pouch. He just kind of, sl- like, literally hands it to you under a table. And it's just like, you speak none of this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make bets. <laughs> he just, just like, um, he rolls his eyes, but just goes like, oh, also, um, do me a favor. If you're uh, handling business for me while I'm away. There's a, it's a kid. Try to be a cadet. Um, first day on the job, he uh, tripped on someone's battle axe and uh, now has three darts in his right shoulder. Uh, ooh. Mm. Poor boy. Poor boy. Uh, he's doing his best. I just think he's gonna need a little extra time. So, uh, <clears throat> you, could, uh, you could help him out with that. I- I'd appreciate it. He's a-, he's a good man. He's just clumsy. Uh, well... I've already done some babysitting. Won't be any you different. The other three, you just hear Talia just go, "As a baby, I resent that statement," <laughs> <laughs> and just goes, "I feel that." <laughs> um, he's just like, "No, he's a good dude." Uh, lives in a cottage a little outside of town. Uh, I think he's too scared of w- living in town because something could catch fire. A lot of catch fire around him. It's real weird. I don't know if there's a god of bad luck who just really likes him. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mess. I'm going to be completely honest with you, but if anyone could, uh, if anyone could uh, help him out, it'd I be feel like Tim I know who this is. It'd be Timbersel's resident guardian angel. Alright, step one, we're going to try remove curse. <laughs> please, <laughs> just, please tell me you've tried this. Oh, he's like, he's, you just hear him go, Damn it, I should see, Yona, you're this is why I need you sometimes, because you give me a pragmatic point of view. And you just hear Nath just go, uh, Zagreus, um, could you could you do me a favor? I uh I wanna see how long it takes my blade to change form. And uh if you could help me with that with a little sparring in the uh, other room, I'd very much appreciate. And he's just like, Oh, yeah, of course, coming. He just goes, His name's Mason, good dude. Uh just Watch your step, and he runs out. As he as he walks out, I just want to like bump him with my hip and just be like, "You're welcome." <laughs> He's just you. You open the bag, and there's twenty gold. Uh, uh, Shira just looks to you and just goes, "What is it with you and tieflings, my man?" Uh, they're just attracted to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she like flips her hair. Like, Sorry, she just goes, Teach me your ways. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start a club or something. <laughs> she was just like, I have to act like I don't know you sometimes. <laughs> uh, same girl, same. I'm gonna pat her on the shoulder. <laughs> They're such good friends. They're such good friends. Rowan, best uh, friends. Rowan you, uh, as this party is kind of waning out, there's a a few people have left. Uh, An alien had to drag Talia away from the bar and to her house. <laughs> um, Rose is probably taken early bed. 
Um, Caleb's still there, and you guys are still there, but a lot of the extras have kind of, kind of dipped. Sylvester's still there. He's very mm-hmm. much enjoying the punch. <laughs> uh, the bird bath punch or the regular punch? I don't think Sylvester knows the difference. <laughs> oh, okay. just like tangy. <laughs> Ew, gross. And, uh, but he's just like, this is the best party ever. <laughs> um, Nathan and Cyrus have been sparring, and Caleb just looks to you all and just says, "You guys have, you guys have been really good friends. I'm really glad we could have this. I thank you." <clears throat> I think no problem, buddy. Hmm. I think Rowan smiles at him, but you can you can tell she looks a little bit sad. Is something wrong, Rowan? Did you not like the, the food? I didn't I didn't supply a vegetarian option. Is that a thing for you? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's it's fine. Um <sighs> shoot, I I should just come out with it since everybody's here. Um, I've, well, we've all been through a lot in the past couple of weeks. And I, after our last battle, I took some time to do some, some deep thinking. Because a few weeks ago, I would have never thought myself capable of doing the things that I did. I don't feel bad, which is weird, because I feel like you should feel bad after killing somebody. (sighs) Anyways, my point is, I just wanted to say that I'm I'm sorry. I, I didn't want to be an adventurer. I wanted to come to Timshul and live a peaceful, quiet life, but I guess that's just not what fate had planned for me. I realize now that I've been a bit of a coward. I've been selfish, and I've caused a lot of the trouble that we got into. So, that being said, I'm hoping to try and improve myself. So, Whatever is to come, I'm all in. I'm ready to be an adventurer. Sorry, Leona. Anything? Just slap her on the back. It was just like, about time. Sorry gives Rowan a big ol' hug. Aw. Caleb just says, you know, I heard something once. That a coward is only a coward until they do something brave. And you've done... Some brave things, Rowan. You have no place to call yourself a coward. You saved this town. All of you have. You're not strays anymore. You're not outcasts. You're not the, the, the ones looked over. No one deserves to be looked over. You're heroes. I hope you remember that. <laughs> Rowan is just grossly bawling. <laughs> and like, gives him a I think Plank probably would hug you, too. Plank is going to hug you, too. There's just this really cute group hug moment, probably, and Shira's like, I guess I'll hug. Aww. <laughs> um, Andre's just like, I don't do hugs, but you have my mental Andre, support. Andre, get in here. Can Plank scribble down a quick note and hand it to Rowan? Yeah, of course. What does it say? You're the bravest coward I've ever met. <laughs> That's a really backhanded compliment, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's just this really happy moment, uh, and Zagreus just walks up to you all and just says, "Well, morning light. I'm a. Uh, I'm, heading, I'm heading out. Me, Nath, Sester, and Lena. We're gonna warn some other towns about what's going on. And along the way, maybe get rid of any of that old hag's forces while we while we can." Nath just goes, we have, like, adjust his glasses. We had them on the run. We have the tactical advantage. And Sylvester just goes, we're going to kick so much ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> Lena's just like, I guess this is part of my mission now, too. And Zagreus just kind of gives Caleb a, a very bro hug and just goes, I'll be back soon, your highness, but I'm, I'm leaving Leona in charge to 
handle the cadets. And Caleb just gets a little shudder, just like, including, uh, <clears throat> and he just goes, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Caleb's just like, good. he just looks to Leona, good luck. <laughs> as the, as the new little party just makes, makes for bed. Uh, Why Caleb has just, he hired this person? He seems <laughs> like he should be the last person to be captain of the guard. Who, Zarius? No, the Mason. No, oh, he's captain. A he's a a oh, I. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that he was replacing Zagreus. Okay, sorry. No, Leona, Leona's taking over. They're not. Oh, Zagreus. yeah. Okay, I. Okay, I got confused. Yeah. Sorry. So, uh, Caleb just goes. I'll. Uh, maybe we should all uh, make camp here for tonight, if you will. Uh, we got a lot of music. We got. Uh, I don't know if you guys know about Scry Vision, but there's a scrying zone that we could look for some channels on. Uh, it'll be nice. We can hang out. As what a, do you as, say? Wait, as Zag and uh, Nathan all them head do? towards the door, Lena just calls him, like, be safe, use protection, bring a shield. Oh <laughs> 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 you just hear Nathan just go, I hope you mean shields. Of course. Um, and it's like just one just gonna gun. Condoms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh my word. Oh my god. So Caleb's setting up the scrying stone for y'all when the lights go out. When they come up again, you hear a voice just go, Oh, that was so sweet. Kind of wish my brother was around for that, but, you know, you killed him. And a drow woman is standing in the doorway with a pistol in her hand. She goes, My name is Ellen, and I'm here to shoot your prince. And that is where we will leave off for tonight. What? What? Oh, that was accepted. No, 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 no. This is so awesome. What have you done? Bobby, can you throw me some rope? I'm hanging off the edge of the cliff here. <laughs> Party just got good. You got great. <laughs> All right, everyone. How dare you? <laughs> that ends well, our downtime. Well, good night, you fine people. Yep, we gotta. That, we gotta make like a. Like a leaf frog and bounce. I make like a banana instead. Make like a that tree and bad. leaf. You guys are uh, better at you. Like Bobby and fuck off. Oh no! Oh, wow. Oh. Rude. Good night, everybody. <laughs>